Happy New Year, and welcome to the Trudy Haynes Show. I'm Trudy, and also, hello, 2018, a good time to start now. Live healthier with Trudy Haynes. Hi, I'm Kate Galuzzi. I'm actually Trudy Haynes' doc, and I'm here for Start Now, Live Healthier. And what we would like to talk about today is some preventive medicine measures that baby boomers should be doing right now so that you can age much more successfully, live longer, and more importantly, live healthier. Everybody talks about diet and exercise, and of course that's important. We know that exercise not only adds years to your life, it adds life to your years, but I want to focus on some of the more medical things that we can be doing to make sure that we live a healthy long life. And prevention is most important. These immunizations become more and more important. Depending on whether you have diabetes or lung disease or other forms of illness that put you at increased risk, you should talk to your provider about getting immunized against pneumococcal disease. There are two immunizations, you've probably heard of them. The Prevnar, which is PCV13, which we give to every senior citizen at age 65. And then followed by that, the, what we call the Pneumovax. The Pneumovax doesn't really prevent pneumonia. We call it the pneumonia shot, but it's neither of these completely prevent pneumonia simply because there are so many different kinds of pneumonia. What it prevents is invasive pneumococcal disease, which can be deadly as we get older. So I recommend that you talk to your provider about being up to date on your pneumonia vaccinations. Annually, everyone should be getting a flu shot. There are two forms of the flu shot that we give to seniors or older individuals. Uh, and for baby boomers, of course, an annual flu shot is important. For people over age 65, there's a high-dose influenza shot now, and these have been shown in many trials to be very effective in reducing the number of deaths from influenza. Influenza isn't just the cold. Influenza can be devastating and can really, unfortunately, uh, start what I call a cascade of disasters. It can lead into bronchitis, pneumonia, hospitalization, and unfortunately sometimes death. So pneumonia shots, annual influenza shots. As we get older, our immunity against shingles begins to wane. And if we had chicken pox when we were children, and you know we all did, and we live long enough, we become susceptible to a re-emergence of that same, that same varicella zoster virus which comes back as shingles. And shingles can be devastating, not just because of the rash and the potential disfigurement, but because of the long-term pain that can occur many, many months after the rash has healed. So what do we do for that? We give a shingle shot. It's called the Zostavax. Make sure you're up to date with that. And that's in addition to the every 10 year tetanus shot that of course you probably are already getting. What other preventive things should we be doing? Well, if you're a woman, of course you should be getting your mammogram on at least an every other year basis. And for everyone at age 50 and then at the appropriate time frame, either three or five years every five years later, you should be getting a uh, colonoscopy to screen for colon cancer. So this is Kate Galuzzi for Trudy Haynes talking about how to stay healthy as we age successfully. Thank you so much. 150 over 90. 180 over 111. 160 over 110. I had a stroke. This is what high blood pressure looks like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a stroke are far from invisible or silent. If you've come off your treatment plan, get back on it or talk with your doctor to create an exercise, diet, and medication plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhbp.org. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. My name is Tony Luke Jr. On March 27th of 2017, my son Tony lost his battle with addiction and I lost him forever. As a father, and one who has battled my own addictions, 
I have seen the pain that it causes from both sides. I started a hashtag brown and white to help fight the stigma and shame associated with addiction. Hashtag brown and white has no political agenda. Hashtag brown and white is a movement. It's not my movement, it's our movement because we all share in this struggle. Post a picture of your loved one and their name. Let the world know they are not a number. They are a human being that lived, struggled, and died fighting this addiction. Hashtag brown and white. It's time to look at addiction differently. Well, Thomas, you've got prediabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. I was very happy to welcome a big organization, State Farm, and the representative, Dennis Jackson, and he's one of us. And the thing that we're going to be talking about today is something that a lot of people really don't think about. We think about dying, but we don't prepare for dying. But more of important than that, because after you die, you, don't, you really don't care. But while you're living, the kind of care you might need when you get my age, for instance. And that's long-term care, and uh, health insurance, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, long-term care. Is, uh, it, it helps with the quality of life as you get older when people have the inability to bathe themselves, dress themselves, toilet themselves. Uh, when you're put into a facility uh, after you've had an injury or some form of incapacitation, um, long-term care is the insurance that you would need to pay that bill. Mm. Now, the average nursing home facility is about $70,000 mm. a year. So if you didn't have any other insurance or it would deplete any uh, money that you assets. saved up for your retirement, any assets you might have, then you would be in a world of trouble. Um, also, if you don't have insurance, of course you use Medicaid, but at that time you won't get the type of care that you may desire. Uh, the nursing home facilities now have a, have a lot more ambiance to them. It's almost like staying at your home. And so you have to factor in that some of the seniors like their independence mm -hmm. and they don't want the family around, the sons, the daughters, tell them everything to do. So these facilities have movie theaters, you know, they have game rooms and they have a lot more to offer. However, if you don't have that insurance, you can't really pick where you want to go. And one of the things that can help with the cost of the long-term care is the, the children. The siblings can get together uh -huh. And to offset the cost, they can chip in and pay it because eventually they're going to have to pay it anyway. <laughs> like yeah. and, and, and the parent may have to move into their house, which may cause some problems if they're not uh, <laughs> good friends with the in laws. <laughs> <laughs> so the person say, I didn't sign up for this. You know, your mother is here, your dad is here. We have to curtail our activities because, uh, you know, we have to take care, take care of your parents. So long-term care, yes, is something that we don't talk about often because of the cost of it or just a misconception that it's something that's covered in your uh, normal mm -hmm. insurance that you take out at work. You do have short-term and long-term disability, mm -hmm. which covers you for your income, but then some of those medical bills, you need specifics to have that. I had a friend who wife uh, had their child at, a, at a, a later age, at 38, and because of that, it, it pronounced and brought out her MS. And as a result, it caused a lot of health problems. However, by having the long-term mm -hmm. care, she was able to go to the hospital and uh, get the care she needed and uh, before she passed away. But without that, it, it would have really been a been strain a on the family. It a strain on the family. So what you're saying is you should start thinking about it early mm -hmm. in life, right? Yes. Yes, because uh, no it gets thing. more as you go get older. That's right, it okay. gets older because typically they base it on a hundred dollar a day up to four hundred dollars a day. Mm -hmm. So if your plan is a hundred dollars a day, thirty days in a month, that's about three thousand um, dollars for for the month. 
-hmm. So multiplying that by 12, that's 36,000. Yeah. That's about half of the average uh, nursing home facility or long-term care facility, but there's something. So if you bring it up to 200,000, then maybe you'll have about 70,000 to take care of that. But if you wait until your later age to get it, the fees are going to be astronomical. Okay. And waiting also, you should talk to your children or your siblings or whoever mm -hmm. it is to start early so they don't have to put in as much. That's right. That's when right. you get older. <laughs> because also, they will look at uh, whether or not that senior can afford it. So there's also the, a suitability form that has to be filled out to see what type of assets they have and whether they can afford mm -hmm. the long-term care. And the insurance company does that to protect the seniors or to not give a, a plan that they- well, that's what you do. Forward. That's what Find I Find a way to pay for that. <laughs> okay. Find a way to pay. So there's a couple ways to pay. Somebody can take their social security money with the adage that you can pay me now or you can pay me later. Mm -hmm. Or you can take a part of your pension and pay that. Or if you have, you don't want to uh, go into your retirement to pay it, but if you did re have retirement money, maybe that can supplement okay. some of your other, something that you couldn't pay with Social Security, maybe you could supplement some of it with your distributions that you get every month from your retirement. So where do we come to get your help? You come to uh, <laughs> 6200 Frankfort Avenue, Suite 2A. Uh, Philadelphia PA 19135. I sit at the corner at Frankfurt Avenue and Harbison Avenue in the northeast section of Philly called Mayfair. And you're one of us, brother, huh? Yes. So you're going to take care of us, right? I take care of you. <laughs> and I have affinity for seniors because I was born, born to older parents. And my dad was 52 when he had me and my mother was 48. Okay. So, uh, so you know what we're, what we're facing. Yes, exactly. Okay. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. See on page four that the projections need to be tornado next Thursday. Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Recently, our country has witnessed catastrophic devastation. Hurricanes and flooding have upended lives and livelihoods. Across this great country, Americans have answered the call. That special calling that compels us, when others are down, to step up and do whatever it takes. America's at our best when, against all odds, we come together and lift each other up. Please donate to OneAmericaAppeal.org. America needs you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm outside of the Bonds Foundation, which I call the Bonds Museum. It's right here on 20th and Fairmount. And it's a gorgeous building. It's elegant. It's the kind of a building that you can go in and feel relaxed and meditate. It's also where you can see some of the world's most beautiful paintings. But right now, we're going to find out what the Bonds has to do with bikes. This is a very special day yes. for your... Uh, your department, yes. which is really bicycles. Tell me about yes. that. Um, yes, so I work for the City of Philadelphia in the Office of Transportation and Infrastructure System, for short, Otis, um, and we manage the Indigo Bike Share System here in Philadelphia. Um, it's the newest form of transportation here in Philadelphia, um, and it's, you know, just a great way to get around for biking at anyone. It's a great way for anyone who wants to get around town on a bike, um, rather it be for active transportation or just recreation, physical fitness, just to time to you know engage with your family or your community we want to be able to provide a tool for that well of course that fits in with our tv show start now and live healthier with trudy haynes and we're so glad to have you on board because we want to see people exercise more mm -hmm. but what are they doing with the barns yes yeah, so we had a very cool collaboration with the barns foundation we worked with them to wrap 20 of our indigo bikes and artwork from the barns foundation so it was really cool we put a poll out for people to vote on which artwork they would like to see on the bikes and so we're having an event today bikes of the barns this is the first 10 bikes that are rolled out we'll roll out another 10 
event later next year. Um, but yeah, it's just a great way to bring people to the Barnes Foundation. You know, the whole our goal with Indigo is to provide people a tool to access a lot of the great things in Philadelphia that they can do. So this is a great way for people to, you know, use Indigo to come to the Barnes Foundation and, you know, see some really cool artwork. How much did all that cost? I mean, people love to ride bikes, but is there a fee attached to this? Yes, so we have a couple of different pricing options. So our monthly pass is $15 a month, and with that you get unlimited one-hour rides for $15 a month, which is really affordable. Um, then we also have an access pass program, so anyone who has an access card for SNAP benefits in the state of Pennsylvania, they can get a membership for $5 a month and get unlimited um, one-hour rides. Well, there you have it, a little experience, a lot of information, and the beauty of exercising while you're getting it. I'm Hania Sharp-Brown. And I'm Holly Mayer. And, and we're, we're on the True Behave Show. Show. Listen, I realize that I'm not perfect but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. Good morning, good morning. My name is Blondell Reynolds Brown. I am a member of the Philadelphia City Council and I chair City Council's Committee on the Environment and Sustainability. We want to say thank you to the Moms Air Force, Moms Clean Air Force group that joined us this past week wherein we talked about clean water and fresh air to breathe for our children and grandchildren. This is an organization of mothers who are active in reminding us that we have to be very, very vigilant when it comes to making sure that we have clean air and clean water. So we invite you to join this group of, uh, of mothers who will be meeting um, regularly here at Philadelphia City Hall. Secondly, we are asking that you will please continue to help us with our warmth and winter initiative, wherein we are collecting new hats, new mittens, new scarves, and new gloves for the over more than 1,500 children in Philadelphia's homeless shelters. Thank you very, very much, and have a happy holiday. Hey folks, I hope you heard by now how great that first team truly really turned out. Girl, we had a ball on Sunday. I was a little nervous. No, I wasn't sure, but it was awesome. We had so many wonderful people there from top to bottom. We had good food, prizes. We even stayed overtime. So I want you to come to the next one. Please watch our Facebook to get all the details. Thank you. We're very happy to welcome you to Trudy Haynes' show. And it's nice to have you at the first of the year because there are a lot of things that you can be concerned about in the coming year. But you've already been here yet. Where are you from and who are you? Well, I grew up in New Jersey. Uh, I spent most of my life in New Orleans. Uh, most recently, though, I was health commissioner in New York City from 2009 to 2014. So now you've been here a year. And going forward, what do you see as the biggest challenge in Philadelphia, coming to Philadelphia? Is it crime? Is it uh, racism? Is it uh, opiates? Uh, uh, what do you see? Well, certainly poverty um, and uh, uh, racism are problems. Uh, I can think about health problems, though, mm -hmm. and things that we can do something about. Um, and the things that kill the most people in Philadelphia are smoking, uh, unhealthy diet and physical activity, and opioids. And so we're working on all of those. Uh, smoking, for example, uh, is estimated now to kill 3,600 people in Philadelphia every year. Uh, we don't think about it because it's so common, but there are high smoking rates in Philadelphia, and it's a very deadly habit. And there are things that we can do to reduce the way that tobacco products are marketed to young people. So we're working on that. And we're working a lot, an awful lot on opioids, which is really the crisis mm -hmm. of our time. Yeah. When you say that we're working on these things, what exactly can your department do? Well, let's take smoking, for example. Uh, we want to encourage current smokers to quit, uh, and we want to reduce the number of young people who take up smoking in the first place. So to encourage current smokers to quit, we have ads that we have on television and on billboards and other places uh, that show people the consequences of smoking and encourage them mm -hmm. to, to quit and provide assistance for quitting. That's been shown to work. To reduce the number of young people who smoke, we're trying to reduce the, the marketing of cigarettes through tobacco outlets all over the city. Uh, they market these candy-flavored 
uh, mm. cigarillos, uh, four mm. for a dollar. They're very cheap. And so we're talking a lot about those risks and trying to reduce the uh, number of places that are selling those. That's something new, isn't it, the candy? It's, yeah, it's something over the last few years has taken up. And uh -huh. now it's got to the point where teenagers are more likely to smoke cigars than cigarettes because they're so cheap to get, and those candy flavors make it an easy switch from candy uh -huh. to smoking. Yeah. Are you funded to do those kind of things? I mean, do you get funded for the, from the state, from the federal government? How, how are you funded to do these and implement the things you want to do? We got some funding from the federal government, from the Centers for Disease Control, for chronic disease prevention. Those are the diseases that you get from smoking and unhealthy diet mm -hmm. and physical inactivity. We also get some state funds, and then we also have city funds. And so we use whatever resources oh, we can to address these biggest killers. And with the present climate, the president that we have now, what is your biggest hope? Well, my biggest hope is that we're going to continue to have the support for public health from the Centers for Disease Control that we have until now are certainly our control of infectious diseases like influenza and measles. That's very dependent on federal funds. Well, I'm worried that we may lose those funds. Also, some of this uh, chronic disease prevention, sm fighting smoking, fighting obesity, that happens with federal funds. So if they continue their funding and otherwise leave us alone, we'll do all right. <laughs> what, but what are your uh, prognosis? Uh, well, I'm very worried about what's happening in the federal government. Uh, I think that uh, they are uh, not concerned about health and not concerned about the welfare of people who are disadvantaged. Uh, here in Philadelphia, we have a very high poverty rate. Poverty is associated with, um, with bad health in many different ways. Um, and the sort of steps they're taking in Washington are going to increase the financial pressures of low-income people. Mr. Farley, how can we, the public, help? Well, when most people think about health, uh, they think about medical care. And the medical care system is important. We all want places to go when we get sick. But people should also think about what makes you get sick in the first place, which usually has nothing to do with Prevention, the medical system. Prevention, Prevention, yes. And so the, the things that matter the most to, to our health these days are smoking, uh, unhealthy diets. So we don't want to have so much junk food in our own environment, and we shouldn't ourselves be consuming junk food. Physical activity, simply be active, that has a huge impact on health, more mm -hmm. than any medicine ever can. Um, and then opioids and other drugs. Uh, if you don't take drugs, you're also going to go a long way to avoiding a lot of different health problems. Okay. I want you to look right out there at your public and tell them what we should do, one, two, and three. Well, I think you should look in your neighborhood and see where there is marketing of products that you know are bad for health those candy-flavored cigarillos, those cigarettes, uh, alcohol, junk food, and say, maybe those, to those stores, maybe you should try to sell healthier items. And maybe we as a community can support those stores in selling, uh, switching to healthier items. And personally, don't use those items. Those things that are really, that's the biggest risk to health today. Um, if you can avoid those items, you're going to do the best you can to have a long, healthy, and wonderful life. Thank you very much. Thank you. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Ooh. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Have you ever met a Rhodes Scholar? We'll meet him next on the show. What is a Rhodes Scholar? What does that mean? So a Rhodes Scholar is a scholarship for postgraduates, meaning people who have completed their undergraduate degrees, and they get a chance to study for two or three years at the University of Oxford in Oxford, England. Um, it's a fully funded scholarship, and students study for two years. They come in with a cohort of 32 American Rhodes Scholars and 80 total Rhodes Scholars from all over the world. And it's just a chance for them to sort of develop their academic abilities, but also leadership characteristics. Um, and just ultimately grow as not only thinkers, but as people as well. Now, I know you were surprised, but I know you were elated. Mm -hmm. And so what does it mean now to your life? Well, it means that there'll be possibilities extended to me that wouldn't have been. Um, it means that I get a chance to sort of buck a cycle that has existed not only within my family, but within my community for a long time now, and be a sort of agent for the change that I want to see exist in my family and my community. What will you be doing? I'll be a teacher, yeah, so oh. I'll eventually get my PhD and become a researcher and a professor. Yeah. 
will you come back to Philadelphia? Oh, or is this your home? Of course, Philadelphia is home. I'll always come back. Yeah. How you doing, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Hunger affects nearly 900,000 people in the Delaware Valley. The number of people right here in our community, especially children and the elderly, who aren't sure where their next meal is coming from is unsettling. But there's something we can do to help. At City Team, we believe in helping people who have fallen on hard times. And we believe there's a way to help people respectfully preserving their dignity. What began in 1989 as a once weekly community meal is now a full kitchen, serving three meals a day, every day of the year. In 2013, we converted our traditional food pantry to create a grocery store style experience, offering fresh produce and full choice options for our households in need of food. In 2015, we launched a new project called Hope Cafe. Each Saturday at City Team, our cafeteria becomes a restaurant experience for the hungry, offering a menu with multiple entree options. Volunteers serve as the wait staff and kitchen helpers. After dinner, all are welcome to stay for a time of music and teaching that gives our guests an opportunity to engage with God in their own way. With each bit of growth, we have remained true to our purpose of serving the way Jesus did, filled with compassion, serving humbly, and giving opportunity to share hope with people in the midst of painful circumstances. And we depend on people like you to donate, volunteer, and help change the lives of people Sorry, it's time to go, but not before I remind you about Tea with Trudy. That's a good time for us to get acquainted and to get to know each other. So please get all of the information by going to our Facebook. And in the meantime, have a blessed day. Most party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul.